Welcome back to my channel and what I want to show you today is how we go about setting up an FPV system for our drone. Now when it comes to FPV most people associate that with uh, racing drones etc and there are a multitude of videos actually explaining FPV and various setups on YouTube. However, this is going to be my video and I'm going to give you the basics of how I would go about setting up FPV because I actually have a little project here. Now, what I have here, what I'm gonna start off with, just to show you guys, is a very, let's call it a <laughs> amateur toy type quadcopter. This is actually a the CX-20, a Tiersen CX-20 quadcopter parts, which I disassembled and rebuilt into a 330 frame to get into this format. And uh, the GPS has been removed, etc. But it lacks FPV. It's, it, it's got none of those things. So it's a very nice little drone to fly. It's very nimble. It's very fast. It is a fantastic fantastic little machine in nowhere nearly <laughs> resembles the original uh, Chisholm CX-20 because my Chisholm CX-20 if you guys go look way further back on some of the older videos I crashed while I was doing some flips this CX-20 is not designed to do flips I managed to do some flips and in the process I crashed it right so obviously you need a drone then you need a camera. Now, in my case, I have a Runcam Owl. Now, this is a pretty nice little thing. I'm not going to be reviewing this. Oh, there's some little documentation and little papers. We'll look at those later. Now, the Runcam Owl is a camera which I want to test. All right. And this is going to be my uh, camera, but Obviously, you can select any kind of camera. I'll put a, a link down to the dis, uh, in the description where you can get to the Runcam Owl. There's also the Runcam Swift. You can even use a standard Runcam as your camera. And this little camera is just, it's a low light camera and it's, it's apparently supposed to be pretty good. And uh, yeah, it's, I must say it's pretty light now. When it comes to FPV racing, which I will not be doing, you need something which is light. But anyway, that's going to be on my camera. And if you want to set up FPV, obviously, you need a camera. This little camera obviously also comes with some cables. We will get to later. There's some mountings and our cables. We'll get to these a little later. So I'm going to put that one side. Now... The basics are, let's just bring that back, camera. The next thing you are going to need is something to transmit it with. I've got a very, very tiny little, this is actually a 600 milliwatt transmitter. It's way overpowered for what I'm ever going to be using. It's a 5.8G. It's a, a very small little transmitter and uh, very, very cheap. And <laughs> that's why I got this. It comes with a little antenna and normally you would use most of the people suggest upgrading to something like a mushroom antenna, etc. But in my case, it, this is going to be sufficient for now. The reason I also like this uh, little uh, transmitter is because it takes voltages anything from 7 to 24 volt. That being um, anything from a 2 cell all the way up. Anyway, that's its little cable. Now... Um, should you get a transmitter, and I'll, I'll put the link down in the description to this specific transmitter, but if you get a transmitter which doesn't take a varying number of voltages, you may need something like a UBEC, which may uh, need to convert the voltages of your battery to 12 volt or 5 volt or whatever your transmitter is going to be. So bear in mind when you order your transmitter, if you do not decide to trans uh, um, 
order this transmitter that you may need a UBEC which converts your voltage into a clean voltage for your specific transmitter. I'm not going to be using this, I'm just showing you this as an example. The next thing you will need is something to receive the signal and display the signal. In this case, here I have a screen, a very, very little cheap little TFT monitor, which has uh, all the required cables, etc. And on the back, I have a receiver. This is a very cheap, this is only a little eight channel receiver, but it'll work because we can just adjust the channel we need on our transmitter to match the receiver yeah the receiver has power yeah now these wires output to the screen and then the screen shows what the receiver is receiving that is option one you can use a screen with a separate receiver or you can actually buy a screen which also has an integrated receiver already you do get those as a single receiver or a single antenna and dual diversity they do get pretty expensive. This is a very, very cheap option if this is the format of FPV that you choose. Your second option for FPV is going to be, now let me remove this. This is actually just a battery. This is a little two cell battery. I've just marked a T2 because that's the way I mark my batteries. Inside the FPV goggles, if you choose to use goggles, you will also have a receiver. This one has its little receiver and this is just the battery connector. It has its output to screen, which is back here. Now let me flip the screen forward so you can just see. So you have a screen which gets its signal from this receiver. So you need to decide how do you want to receive your signal and have it displayed. So you're a, you have a receiver. This one just happens to have a mushroom antenna. This one also is a multi-channel receiver. So you can decide, are you going to use goggles or are you going to use a separate screen? But either way, I'll put the link down in the description for how I assembled these goggles, which also contains the link to where you can order these if you, should you decide to use these goggles. I'm pretty impressed with these. Very, very affordable. Now, I know the very first question that always comes up is, how do you put this all together? Now, considering your components, we have the uh, camera with its transmitter, and we will always have a screen and its receiver. And those basically just need power. Now, let me show you how we are going to put that together. Bring the cables closer. I'm not going to worry about the mounting for now. Now, when you order a, a Runcam L, you're obviously going to get all these cables with it. When you order any other kinds of cameras, it may come up with a different set of cables. However, there will always be a set of cables which include the audio, video, cable now audio may not always be required and in most cases these cameras do not even have a microphone and you connect your cable in there and you may need it may have this additional cable uh, which outputs to larger size um, connectors but in my case for this run camel i'm not going to require that that gets dumped I'm only going to be using these connectors. Now, the yellow in uh, traditionally is a video, and the black and white on that same cable is normally for power. Right, now this one we do know does not have any kind of um, audio, so because there's no microphone. This cable, on the run cam is simply to adjust settings etc on the camera I am going to plug that in for now because I may need to adjust some settings right now your video transmission cable is is yellow but however it is going to need ground as well so um, consider that your grounding process needs to be the same for your 
transmitter as it is going to be for the video and the power cable connection. On your transmitter, you must always bear in mind, a transmitter must always, always, always have its antenna connected before you connect any kind of power. The cable that comes with it gets plugged in. Right, now your transmitter will usually have a button. In this case, we have a little button on that side, which you're going to be using to change your channel settings. Your transmitter will usually come with a card like this, describing how your channels work, the frequencies they will be on, and uh, how to set it up. We have red as our voltage in, we have black for ground, and then we have yellow, which is our video in. White, in this case, is going to be audio in, should you have audio, and then black again is ground. In general, black is always ground. One of the most important things that you have to uh, remember when ordering your receive, uh, your transmitter and your camera is to make sure that the voltages that you will be using can be matched. So let's say that you have a system on your quadcopter which is 12 volt. You have to make sure that your camera and your transmitter uh, can run on 12 volt else you will need to use a UBEC which uh, changes the voltages to the voltages you are going to be needing. Now in my case I have a 3 uh, a 3S system here, 3 cell system which is around 12 volt and both of these are going to work on that because I made sure of that. But bear in mind that you do get some cameras which run only 5 volts and as well as transmitters which will only run 5 volts and um, you need to make sure that you have a system which supplies only 5 volts for those type of cameras or transmitters. So bear that in mind when you do order these things that that is how you need to set them up. Right, the next thing I'm going to do before I connect all these cables is get my little Runcam L mounted somewhere onto my quadcopter and from there I will um, go further and uh, explain how you wire all of this up. I'm probably going to be cutting off these connectors because I like soldered connections uh, rather than plugged in connections. These cables might be too long or I need to fit them in somewhere. But anyway, that's all. I'll get you on the next next part. Now there are a number of ways to mount the Runcam L onto your chosen quadcopter. In my case, you get all these different weird mountings and things. I'm not going to use them. What I have chosen is this little rocker mounting, mounting. And I'll be using this with the supplied screws, which we have here. We have long, short, etc. So we've got anything and everything to fit this whole setup. I'll be mounting it from the bottom onto the edge of my quadcopter here so I can rock it up and down as needed to get the exact angle I want. But obviously my first part is going to be just to get these little screws in here, which lock down the angle. So I'm going to select a, let's just keep it fairly straight now. I want obviously the option to angle it up. And I will show you exactly why in a couple of minutes. I have my temporary angle selected there. Now why do you want to tilt this up? Now, let me get all this stuff out of the way and bring my quadcopter a little closer. When we have this mounted on there and we have our angle at what it is now, we must consider when this, this quadcopter flies forward, it tends to tilt forward. So if you have this two level in line with your quadcopter, what happens is you tend to see too much ground. And that is the reason we want to tilt this up. So that as this quadcopter tilts forward, we see more of what is ahead. That's obviously going to depend on your confidence and the speed at which you choose to fly. I've got it set at 
temporary that angle which is not too steep but obviously it can be adjusted which is nice about this type of mounting now that I have my uh, camera mounted here at the front uh, the next step is going to be to get all the wiring connected up now the first thing I need to do is get power onto the camera because the camera needs power via these two leads now I'm not going to be using the connector because I'm going to be drawing power directly from my power distribution board here now um, again make sure that your camera and your trans transmitter for that matter can handle the voltage you will be supplying in my case I'm going to be using a 3S battery this is a little older battery it's already a little bloated but <laughs> it still works it's, it's fine for testing and to confirm the voltage that you get there connect it up check it get a, a voltmeter this is obviously a multimeter is one of those things if you're in this hobby you really should have one of these things and obviously we are going to check our voltage there that's positive that's negative and we are getting our 12.6 this is a fully charged battery and yes um, I know my camera can handle the 12.6 volts as well as my transmitter here because my transmitter is rated up to to be honest 24 volts so yes um, I'm going to be soldering that onto the board there. Now you are welcome to use connectors or whatever you choose to use. But uh, people get so caught up in this type of connector, that type of connector. You know, don't fret it. Just, just use whatever you have at your disposal. In my case, um, I'm happy with soldering this on. And... I don't know why everyone goes about but I've got this connector on yet yeah, cut it off and put on whatever you need uh, whatever is available in your area or just connect them directly and solder them I like soldering things because yeah, they can't come loose right I'm gonna solder that and um, once I've done that and also soldered on the power lead for my uh, transmitter uh, ground is the same. I don't know if the ground runs through on both sides. If you are in, in a case like this where you have two ground wires and you don't know whether the grounds are connected. In this case, we have a transmitter that has two ground wires and they're both black. Now, if you don't know whether the ground wires are actually connected internally, the simple way is get your multimeter and switch it over to continuity testing. Continuity testing will just tell you whether they're is a circuit by beeping and then test it on both those there's no voltage really going through here it's just testing whether that circuit is a running circuit and when it beeps it tells you that circuit is connected so you do not need to ground both these wires because they are one circuit yeah there you go you need to ground one of them but you do not need to ground both of them because they are running from the same ground rail right that's a simple test if they do not match up which <laughs> I cannot fathom why that would be then obviously you would need to connect both onto ground but yeah there you go let's go on and uh, just wire this up the first step is going to be for me to cut this off so I'm gonna give it a little bit of length just in case I want to use that connector again so this little connector give it just a tad of length just Strip that off. Okay, and these wire ends are already stripped off. What I've done now is I have soldered on these connections to, <laughs> if you can actually see the solderings, they are not pretty, but uh, yeah, I'm not great at soldering. So that's the positive side. That's the negative or ground side, if you uh, prefer. And I've connected up ground on our transmitter onto the side as well as its positive supply the yellow wire which is our video transmission line I've just connected piece to piece and I have put on some uh, heat shrink there the same with the camera's power supply red to red positive and black to ground or negative 
Right, so we are pretty much ready to power it all up. I have not yet decided where I'm going to place the transmitter. So I'm first going to power up the quadcopter. There we go. Right, that's powered up. Now it shows channel 8 here and uh, by pressing that little button you can change those channels. Right, let's leave it on 8 for now or 1. Long press is going to select the sub channels E, F, A, I'm assuming small a, B, E, F, Right, so yeah, that's around it. Now this may take some playing around because now we bring our screen closer here. Now I'm going to use this FPV screen I've got here and I'm going to connect another battery to punch it that. Now obviously that's that's pretty much the same thing. You know, these, these receivers have power all these leads are marked and you just have to match up the voltages and now we're going to switch that on channel one we start on channel one let's say and switch on the screen right now i've got it on channel one yeah but remember these channel channels and each manufacturer has their own choice of what channel where <laughs> they 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 tend to be a little odd now if I'm on channel one there, let's uh, change the sub channel yet to, let's start on the big A. You can already see there's some activity there. All right, big A. So we start on big A and we are on channel one, big A. And I'm on channel one, yeah. Now this only is, this is only an eight channel receiver and that's its channel selector. Push that one so it's on channel two. Don't see anything. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so nothing changed there. Now we change the sub channel here. I prefer changing the sub channel each time. We make it small a. And I start changing here again. Back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. No image. Hold, <laughs> hold on. I've actually forgotten. However, it would have shown an image. Of, I didn't take the cap off. Take off the lens cap. Right, we take off the lens cap and we start again. Long press. And I change it to small b. And we go flip through around these again. It's two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Now, oh, eight. Right, still nothing. Now that's pretty much the process I follow until I have gone through all of them. All right, let's see. Oh, hold on, we've got a bit of an image. Oh, there we go. There's an image. So that is on channel eight, yeah, which is channel one there. I'll be holding this button. It shows E. So 1E computes to channel 8 on the side. Now if I flip the channels through there, oh, it actually does change the quality slightly, but it is close to that frequency. And I think the very first one was about the best. There we go. So that'll be channel 8. And there we go. I like that. You can actually flip through these again and I'll compare them until you have one that looks the very best to you. But there we go. And we have FPV. Now it's pretty much just a matter of mounting your transmitter onto a place, cleaning up the wires, and there you go. That's FPV. I'm quickly going to find a place where I can mount my transmitter. Now unfortunately, the 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 owl little uh, camera doesn't doesn't do any kind of recording, but uh, yes, it does work. And uh, I'm not going to do a flight test. There you can see for yourself it does actually work. Let's just match up our. Um,
goggles and see if we can get the goggles to work as well. I'm going to be changing the channels on the goggles rather than changing them on the transmitter again because we already have a channel which is working on the transmitter. So we don't want to fiddle with that again. And I'm just going to power these up. Let me just find the switch on this. Right, this is on 3B. Now let's just match it up and see if we're not lucky. I'm going to put it on 1. So it's on 1. Okay, it's almost getting there. And I'm going to do a long press, which works the same on this one. Let's change the C. Oops. Change that back to 1. 1C. It's long press. Alright, on D, A. Back to 1. Long press. B, C. D A B. So you see that they, they do not always match up exactly. So once you get to a repeated channel, let me just get back to the small a, there we go. I'm going to put on two and then long press again so it flips through those sub channels. It's getting very close. Right, one channel three. And let's just flip three. Oh, hold on, there was one at four, I think it was. There we go, four is showing. Let's just flip through the sub channels and see. Right, so on four A. There we go. So now we have our, our big screen and we have our goggles as well. I don't know if you can actually see the goggles very well here, but it is actually showing there. Let me just move this around a little bit so you can see. And there you go. It is actually displaying. And with that, I'm happy we can take it further from there. So guys, that is pretty much that. I'm just going to clean up the wiring here. I'm going to find a place where I can actually mount this antenna and um, then we are pretty much ready for flight. And there we go. This is the completed setup. I've got my little FPV screen here for uh, just for display. I'm ne probably never going to use this, but that's just to show you that it actually works. I'll probably be using the goggles, which I have here, and you can see the display is the same through there. And uh, all I've done now, let me just get all this stuff one side, is I've just cleaned up the cables, cable tied everything so it's out of the way. And um, there we go. Everything is running and working nicely. Now what I did is I actually put the, the transmitter down one of the legs. Now, is it ideal? By all means, no. Is it functional? Yes, it works. And... Um, this is a toy to me, it's <laughs> nothing serious, it's not, never going to be a racing drone or anything. But uh, there you have it, it's going to work there. It's out of the way of the props and um, as you can see even the props aren't clean. This is really a toy quadcopter to me at this stage. But if you're a lot more serious, you might want to mount it somewhere nice. But yeah, that's how I've done it, it's just to demonstrate how FPV works and how you can get it set up. The simplicity of it, it really is not as complicated as a lot of people would make it out to be. If you have any questions, please pop them down in the, the comments below. Uh, some of the parts I will list in the, the uh, description below. So if you have any questions, there you go. I will try and help where I can. I'm no expert, by all means, I'm not an expert. I just figure this out by reading a couple of articles and going around and checking how some other people have done it. And then I went and discovered some of these items by myself because I don't want to fiddle around with different voltages. Your main thing is check your voltages, make sure everything fits together and Bob's your uncle. There you go guys, if you enjoyed the video, please, I really appreciate a like 
and do subscribe if you'd like to see more of these type of things and if you'd like to see other videos on other subjects in this genre please let me know by posting a comment there you go guys have a great day bye